Okay, let's look at these dynamical chemical equilibrium graphs. Remember, dynamical chemical, dynamic chemical equilibrium comes immediately after reaction rate. So basically, these are like reaction rates. And there are two types of these equilibrium graphs. There's this one over here, which is the concentration graph. And the second one is the rate of reaction graph. So first of all, let's go and look at this concentration graph here, first of all. Okay, so let me try and find this brush here. Okay, we're going to look at concentration. Now, when you have a reaction, fairly obviously, you don't have any products. We are looking at this reaction system here. Hydrogen plus iodine goes to hydrogen iodide. So the forward reaction is producing hydrogen iodide. The reverse reaction is decomposing it back down into hydrogen and iodine. So if we look on the concentration graph, fairly obviously there's no hydrogen iodide at the start, but we do have hydrogen and iodine, and this is a concentration graph. It doesn't actually matter where they are on the concentration axis, but because they are a reactant, there will be a lot of them. Now reaction rate theory tells you that um, when a reaction occurs, when the concentration is high, the reaction will be fast. And as the concentration of the reactants decreases, the reaction will slow down. But because this is a reversible reaction, if this were just a straightforward forward reaction, we would only have these lines and they would come down to nothing. All of the reactants would be used up. For instance, if you looked at the iodine, it would eventually just drop down to nothing like this. But this is not what happens. This is an equilibrium reaction. And the moment we start forming hydrogen iodide, which is what occurs as soon as the forward reaction starts, we start making hydrogen iodide. The hydrogen iodide then decomposes backwards to hydrogen and iodine. So eventually what happens instead of the reactant's concentration going to nothing, the reactant concentration, in actual fact, levels off. Both reactants will level off the hydrogen and the iodine, and the same thing happens with the products. So this looks like an ordinary straightforward reaction when it levels off like this, but the fact is there are still reactants left with the products and all the time this hydrogen iodide is decomposing back to hydrogen and iodine. So the moment the graph goes level like this at this level place over here, this is where we consider equilibrium to be reached because the concentration is remaining constant. If this was an ordinary reaction, like I said, the reactant concentration would go to nothing, but it's an equilibrium reaction, so the graph levels out like this. So this is what it would look like if you're looking at the concentration of the reactants and the products. If you look at the rate of reaction, the definition says to you, a reversible chemical reaction in which the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are taking place at the same rate. Okay, So as you can see here, this is a rate of reaction. And we've got the forward reaction on the solid line and the reverse reaction from the dotted line. And obviously, the reverse reaction over here starts at zero because you can't have a reverse reaction until you have formed some products. So the reverse reaction always starts at zero. And the forward reaction is initially very fast. You can see the slope of the graph here is quite steep. Let me make this line thicker. You can see this is quite steep at the beginning and then the gradient starts decreasing as we use up our reactants, and eventually the graph levels out, the gradient is decreasing. And this is my forward reaction, which is producing the hydrogen iodide. The reverse reaction is the hydrogen iodide decomposing. This also starts out fairly fast, and then it starts leveling off. And as per the definition, when the rate is equal, this is equilibrium. And so on a rate graph, these two lines will be touching when the concentration of the reactants and the products are not changing, and the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the backward reaction. So this is what the difference is from a um, chemical equilibrium graph versus a uh, a straightforward reaction. Remember, if there was a straightforward reaction, the rate of the forward reaction would eventually drop to nothing because there would be no more reactants left. But instead, we have this situation where the rate of the forward reaction levels out.